In this lecture, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of NA10 and what is it. So let's go to NA10 first. Um, you sign up, get your account set up. Uh, you can also self-host this, but I'm using a cloud-hosted uh, version. Once you open your instance, uh, then you see a bunch of different uh, menus and so on. So this entire thing is only for your organization. Uh, you can see your overview or personal, and you can manage multiple projects here. You can go back to admin panel where we just came from, and important is templates. There's a huge community of N810 templates, 4,800 templates. What is a template? You search something about Gmail, you find 700 people, or at least 700 templates were uploaded by people. Maybe one person uploaded multiple. If you open one of them, you'll see that it is a workflow that somebody made and put it there out for free. And you can zoom in and zoom out and use that actually for your own purpose. This is really cool. The community-driven approach of NA10 is really cool. And then you see all your workflows listed down here. All the credentials that you can save, all the API keys and so on goes here. And you can see all your execution of all your workflows in here. Some basic stats about your NA10, like how many execution and so on, any errors and so on. And from here, you can create your very first NA10 workflow. We don't need this panel so much, so I'm going to collapse it. The very first step that you can do with an NA10 is like literally putting a trigger. And in here, you can put a title to your a memorable title. Let's call it workflow one. I'll just call it Gmail inbox or draft or whatever you want to call it. Then you have this little toggle button, active, inactive. If you put this active, this means it's uh, your workflow is accessible online. Uh, which is going to be the case for our workflow number three, which is the invoice uploading feature or the receipt uploading feature. And the editor mode means like right now you're in this building mode. In execution tab, you will see all your workflow executions. Whenever a workflow executes, you will see them in here. Basically, all the data snapshots goes there. And then evaluations is a little bit advanced topic. It's basically the way you test your workflows and you make sure your workflows can run. All right, so that's pretty much the basics. When you click this, um, you see a list of things. Usually, since this is so-called trigger, therefore, you see all the triggers in here. And you can also search it, actually, here. You can search, for example, chat, one of the triggers that we are going to do in the next lecture. And how do you know if it's a trigger? You have this tiny little flash sign next to it. That indicates that this is a trigger. And once you put a trigger, I'm not going to do the whole thing. We'll do that later. And then the, the other nodes look a little bit different. Like now if I put Gmail, this is a different node. It's not a trigger. If I add, let's say, create draft, we'll come back to this in the next lecture, and I open this one, just keep an eye on this window. We'll, we'll, you'll notice something. And then I open this one. It's a little different. So in this one, you see like a window right here, like this, and then a window here. But in this one, you have a different system. Input, output, and the setting. Isn't it that old school input, process, output? It's so amazing. The, the way NA10 folks simplified this thing is amazing. You're going to learn it uh, as we go on. It makes sense. And then you put another one. For example, you put, um, let's say, Airtable. It's, it's a database thing. You'll see, again, the same approach. Like, 
input, these settings that you put in, that based on this, these settings, the processing will happen, and then the output. One thing that I advise a lot is learning JSON, learning how to read and write JSON, about which we're going to have like a little tiny lecture at the end of the lectures as an, an uh, appendix, uh, but not as a part, core part of this tutorial series. With this introduction, we're done. Let's go and start building our first workflow.